and we're starting with the Crusaders versus the Chiefs this Friday. Before we go on to that game, into a prediction. Now, we're going to run our predictions slightly differently. What we're going to do is we're going to go through every team in Super Rugby, and the guys went through and did this last night, go through every team and rate them, 12 through 1. Across these different elements, we're talking type 5, Lucy's, halfbacks, midfielders, and outside backs. Assign points, and then at the end of it, we add up those points and we see who is going to be the best. Start with you, Jipper. How did you rate these teams, the top four teams in each of those positions, and then add them together and see what your top eight looks like this year in Super Rugby? Yeah, well, I suppose uh, starting with type five, I think I've gone the Crusaders top um, just over the Chiefs purely because of the depth they've got in that type five. You know, they've got strong... Um, you know, locks and squad members, but at prop, which is such a key position, and we're talking about the speeding the game up, having the ability to bring international players off the bench is huge, and um, you know they've got them in droves, so I think they take the nod there. I've gone the Chiefs second, um, probably more so on what I saw the other night, like when Taki Aoho came on and Brody Retallick, and you know they've got uh, Tupo Vai as well. Maybe like they've had a few injuries, like the Angus Tarvel not being there at prop is, you know, that tight head position maybe is probably their only position that they'd be looking at. But outside of that, they've got a really strong type five. Um, I've gone the Brumbies at three, just because this is their game. Their bread and butter is up front. They love driving malls. They love just being direct um, and, you know, taking it to you. And also at set piece, they've got two big bodies that'll disrupt your ball. If you can disrupt that ball, it's massive. And then fourth, for me in the type five, I've gone the Blues. Um, and and I, I think they've got, you know, strong contenders led extremely well in that type five by Patrick Tui Pilotu. And, and I don't know if you saw, but, um, and Bryn will love this, is Cam um, Swifua played at lock the other night. And I was interested that he got put there, but man alive, he had a game. So they actually proved to me there's enough depth in that squad. Um, you know, to, to warrant being in that full spot. I've got um, the exact same top four. Um, I've just changed. I just had the Chiefs just in front of the Brumbies. Um, so I went the, I actually went, I went the Crusaders, the Crusaders first. I actually went the Blues. I went the Blues second. Is it a similar kind of setup for the Lucys as well? Uh, the Lucys, what did I go for the Lucys? I went the Blues actually for first with the Lucys. Um, I had the Blues first with the Lucys. They've got a great starting, um, six, seven, eight. I think dynamic, powerful, work rate. Um, so I had them at first. I, then I had the Chiefs at, a, at second. I had them second with obviously Kane, Jacobson and, and Peter Gusto Okulu is going to be massive with the points we talked around with the back of a scrum. Um, he's going to be huge for them. Then I had the, I had the, the Crusaders um, third, and then I had the Brumbies. I had the Brumbies um, come in with Valentini, Samu. Beautiful. Well, I've got the Blues too. I think again, it's a depth issue. You know, you've got a, uh, you've got absolute X factor up front, but they've also got that second tier and behind. And we've seen time and time again, old six titles over there. <laughs> you're going to need your whole, you're going to need your whole squad. Um, Hurricanes. I've gone second. I think I just kind of, I just can't have them not in the top two with Artie Savia being there. I think Duplessis Karifi is another one. You know, Yolse is a young man that, you know, could really come onto the scene. So I like their mix of um, Lucy's went the Chiefs third. And I've actually gone the Tars fourth. I think um, Swinton's back. Uh, they've got obviously Hooper. Um, and an, an, um, Charlie Gamble, I just love the way he plays, man. Like he just one of those hard on your sleeves blokes. Um, I don't know, he's infectious to watch. So I, I think they're they're a worthwhile mention. It um, and the way they use their loose forwards to their strengths. It's not so much that um, you know physical side of the game. They're just really smart in the way they use them in the width and attack. But also defensively, they just go low and they create that opportunity for jackals. Okay, that's the forward packs out of the way. How do you see the halves, Brenner? Your area of specialty. Who is on top there? Yeah, I found this. I found this really, really hard actually, because um, there's obviously good players, either a good nine or a good ten. So collectively, I tried to bring them both together with nine and ten. So I actually had, um, I actually had the Blues. Had the Blues when you got Finlay, Christine, you got Bowden, Barrett. Those two together, um, it's a pretty formidable um, one-two punch. And then I've gone. You can't go past obviously Drummy and um, Richie Mwanga. They've won six titles, six titles together. You've got Willie Hines coming back, who's I think a great a great signing for them to be able to bring experience with with myself leaving. And then you've got a young guy with Noah Hotham, who I think he's going to be a kid to watch in the next couple of years. Very good. Um, bring something different than both those two players. So 
I've got um, I've got the Crusaders in at second. I've then gone the I've gone the Chiefs because you've got Damian McKenzie and you've got a great um, halfback pairing with um, Ratima Ratima and Braid Webber. And you you could choose Bryn Gatlin well, who had a great season last year. Whether you have Josh Hawani in there as well, so the depth that they have in the inside pairing is very very good. Um, and then last, I have gone. Who have I gone last? I win the Highlanders. You've got Falau Fakatava and you've got Aaron Smith, two incumbent All Blacks. I've actually gone the exact same. It was hard to leave the Brumbies out because I think I still think olosio has got a lot to offer, um, and, and obviously Lonigan's there, and they've got that international experience. Same, um, I like the mix at the at the Tars um, with Gordon um, and Harrison, and, and you know they've they've got a few guys that can play that sort of 15, 10 role midfield. Uh, I've gone Crusaders, just plethora. Of, of talent, you know, you got Havili, you got Eno, you've got Good Hugh coming back, you got um, Lester Fayanganuku that can slip in there. Um, it's just, you know, it's just endless um, options. So they take um, out top. On the Blues, second um, with a tight race with the Chiefs. I think you know they're pretty evenly matched in that midfield. Um, you know, obviously Roger and Rico, and Rico is probably in the form of his life. Um, Anton Leonard Brown coming back um, is massive. So, and I, I think you know his match with. Sadly that Alex Nankerville's leaving, but um, you know, he, he's he's a key p- part of that squad and he looked like a player who had a point to prove the other the other night. He was just all energy. And then I've got Moana Pacifica uh, for fourth. I, I just think Levi Almua is just X Factor. Um, he's got enough support around him, but he, he is a player that he can change games, and I think you know you have to acknowledge his ability at midfield. Yeah, I'm presuming you like the Crusaders midfield, Brennan. Yep, so I had the Crusaders at first, um, and then I actually had I had the Hurricanes. I think the Hurricanes and the and the depth that they have. I think you've got Jordy Barrett, who's probably going to be playing 12 um, for them, and then you've got Proctor and you've got Umanga Jensen there as well. Um, you've got Riley Higgins, who I think is going to be a young, great, um, up and coming um, guy there. So. I've gone the Hurricanes and then I think I've gone the Chiefs. I went the Chiefs and then I've gone the Blues. I split those two. That's interesting. I, I was expecting someone to say Blues top based off the fact that the top two starting midfielders are probably two of the most X-factor midfielders in the world. Um, but they don't have a huge depth in behind the way the Crusaders do. No, not like the Crusaders. And I, I think Bryn makes valid points on the Hurricanes too, to be fair. Um, as he sort of read those names out, it was like, yeah, you, they definitely weren't to be in the conversation. So I, I think it was probably the hardest one to pick. I, I felt like the midfielders, they were all pretty evenly matched and, and that all black talent is quite widespread. So it'll be really key on those extra members in and behind them. Yeah, and what about them? as far as the outside backs? Oh, outside backs? Oh, my forte, obviously, spent a bit of time on the wing. Um, <laughs> I've gone Blues. I think they've got X Factor purely because I would have gone probably the Crusaders had Will Jordan been there because you can't not have a team. But he he's obviously still making his way back. So I think the, at this current point in time, um, it puts the Blues ahead in terms of, um, you know, especially where a guy like Mark Talao got to. Um, and you've got Caleb Clark, and I think I think Stephen Pettifetta is just growing in confidence. Um, whether it's him or Bowden at 15, I think it's a good mix. I've gone the Crusaders second, I've gone the Chiefs um, third. I, I think they looked outstanding from the back, and, and seeing Sean Stevenson get some good minutes at 15 um, is really exciting. And, and you know the way Damien uh, ran the cutter and his ability to slip back there, and obviously Gats is there as well. I don't know. I just think there's a nice uh, mix in their squad for that back three. Uh, and then you've just got to put the drawer in there. You know, the, the flying Fijians, the X Factor. They, you know, they're going to be outstanding from from the back. I mean, obviously balancing it with their kick strategy and, and not overplaying their hand, but from an entertainment point of view and, and excitement factor, where I read it, I, I, and their form. Pre-season um, and their ability to score long-range tries from an outside back point of view, they have to be there in the top four. Even without Mbossi. Yeah, a- absolutely. I-, I just think it's their that's their natural way of playing, and they, they they're not afraid to chance their arms. So um, I back them to to be uh, you know a real point of difference out there. Very similar top two with Joe. I found it hard to go with the Blues and um, the Crusaders, but I the fact that you had I had Will Jordan if he is playing, um, he's the difference for me. But if he's not playing. Then I'd have the Blues with the likes of Mark Talia, Caleb Clark, and you've also had AJ Lamb, who was great last year with mm. with a few injuries to Caleb Clark. So and Bryce Heem again can cover that position. Even Roger Tuivasa-Shek, we might see him possibly mm. in the wing in some back ends of game. So um, the Blues, and then um, I went the went the Chiefs with Satoru and and Stevenson and Damian McKenzie and Joshuaani. Wherever they played Damian, obviously they might play him at ten, but 
Visit at fullback and that plus with, the, with Sean Stevenson and, and Satoru, um, it's a great back three. And then, yeah, you could go the Hurricanes. I think, again, they've got great with Ray RC, Julian Sever, who's um, who's de- defying um, defying age with the winger, power winger. But I agree with Joe. I've gone the draw. If there's one position that um, when it comes into this ranking system where you'd back them, it would be the outside backs because um, it doesn't matter if they're coming off the bench or whoever's starting. Um, anytime they get their hands on ball, um, it, it's tough to defend them. We've seen pitches, um, especially early on in that preseason game, and you give them a bit of space and a bit of room, um, they'll punish you. So um, I went to draw uh, coming in fourth with um, their ability with the outsides. Having seen Jipper on Instagram, would you say he's built like a winger these days? I don't know. Well, you would say, uh, I'd probably say two years ago when he was lean and he was, you know, 80 salt, 80 odd kgs, but he's got bigger up top now. Look how tight that triple XL shirt is on him. So, I, I honestly I do not know what I was thinking. <laughs> if, I, if I'd done it earlier in the year, you know, it would be forgotten about. Like, I just clearly wasn't thinking, so I've got to take the heat. I've got to take the heat. Uh, it's just purely out of jealousy, though. Oh, you know, yeah. like, I mean, in the end. Well, the post is purely out of vanity. <laughs> 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 and supporting my mate, of course, who's helping me train. Of course we're going to get the handles yeah, yeah, yeah. at the bottom here so people yeah. can check out these pictures um, as the season goes on. Oh. <laughs> so our top eight, so, I, I guess okay. we're going to... So with all of that said, you combine your points from all of those five elements, let's find out which team is the best squad with the inside running to be Super Rugby champions. Yeah, well thankfully it's consistent with my prediction. I've got the Blues at top, Crusaders second. Um, I'm going with the Dalton Papali'i uh, theory of you've got to lose one to win one, so that's that's my boy Dalton. Uh, Crusaders second, Chiefs third, Brumbies fourth. This was hard, but they was, was they were tied. But you know, give a bit of Australian love there. Put them fourth. Canes fifth. Uh, I had the Tars at six, the Landers at seventh. Then I had three teams um, in the draw: MP and Reds at at eight. But I, I've picked the draw just based on preseason form. They can. BMI 8. And Brenna, when you added up all of those numbers from your rankings across the board, I'm presuming that the top yep. two are the other way around. Yeah, correct. You. Good, good <laughs> maths there, Ross. Um, yeah, I've gone um, gone the Crusaders first. It was tight, though. It was, it was really, really tight. One or two points between the Blues. So I think those would be the two four teams in the um, when it comes to the back end of the season. But the Chiefs, man, the Chiefs, um, yeah. they've come in in third. Just on the Chiefs, if, you, if they can get... You know, we talk about a spine. You know, if they can get Tokiaho, Retellick, um, Tupo Vai, Sam Kane, Peter Gus, Weber, McKenzie, Stevenson, Satura, all these names, you know, and obviously Anton Leonard Brown, who I think was a massive piece that they missed last year, having all those guys on the field, um, they're going to be very, very tough whether it comes to the Blues and the, and the Crusaders if it comes into that finals period. But I've gone the Hurricanes four, the Brumbies are at five, so they've switched with uh, with Chip there. I went the Highlanders at six um, and the Waratahs are at seven. And on the point system, I've got the Reds finishing at, at, at the bottom eight, of the, sorry, to finish eight in the top eight. But I'm going to go against that with the draw. I think the draw with their positioning of how they went in the preseason, I've got them finishing the top eight. But if you went through the point system, our Reds, our Queensland fans, they make my top eight. But I don't know, know if they're going to be fans anymore. <laughs> You've just said they made my top eight, but I'm changing them for the draw. <laughs> For the fact that they were on the point system, they were a top eight. But I'm going to draw. They're going to be the um, they're going to be the big movers um, this coming season. Okay, and anyone who's watched the show will know that you're the president of the Rebels fan club. Uh, whereabouts are they yeah. sitting on your list? Yeah, uh, the Rebels. I tell you what, they had a couple of good signings, but no, I've got them twelve. <laughs> them at the right at the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> right at the bottom, unfortunately. So yeah, it's going to be tough for our. It's going to be tough for the Rebels. You've got to load He's up that He's a brutal man. He's load a brutal man. He said that with a, with a smile on his face. <laughs> I don't have to play them this year in the Rebel round yeah, at all. True. So I'll yeah. laugh them. But, um, I had them at the Rebels. Rebels. From what I remember, when you did have to play them last year, you scored a try and you guys won by heaps. So you don't have to worry about too much. Well, uh, you know, but I did get a few DMs, just people just absolutely telling <laughs> me when it came to them. So, uh, they might get a win here and there. Who knows? We'll see. 